Hello and welcome to this Futurum Tech webcast brought to you in collaboration with BMC. I'm joined by Paul Spicer and Paul Buchanan. We've got BMC and Ensono on the show today. So guys, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. So hearing a lot about AI, it's the key sort of phrase in the industry. Everybody's talking about it, huge buzzword. We're here to talk about AI ops. But before we do that, let's get some introductions. Paul. Yeah, so I'm Paul Spicer. I work for BMC Software as a product manager. Uh, I've been at BMC for coming up to 10 years now. Um, been working on the monitoring side and, and you know, for quite some time, automation and sort of more recently some of the AI stuff. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much me. And you, Paul? Paul Buchanan, I come from Insono. I'm an expert mainframe system programmer. I have focused on event management and correlation for the last several years and uh, getting into AI ops. So let's frame this up, Paul, let's go to you first. Let's get the BMC perspective. As I say, AI as a term, lots of buzzwords, lots of hype in the market, lots of stuff around large language models, lots of stuff about chat GPT. What does that mean from a BMC perspective? Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, it's all about using artificial intelligence and machine learning to make operations more efficient. Um, and, and, and easier, basically. So we're just leveraging that capability inside of products, you know, purpose-built products, really to take you know, some of the expertise required out of things, I mean, less experienced people in the workforce. So you know, trying to make things easier, more efficient, things like you know, faster ability to detect problems, you know, faster problem you know, diagnosis, so you can get to resolution faster. I mean, that's really what it's all about, you know, and just basically making things more efficient and easier for customers. So, Paul, from a uh, client adoption perspective, you've probably got as good a perspective as anybody in the industry, given the footprint of Insono. Tell me a little bit about what you're hearing from an AI ops perspective. As a managed service provider and dealing with several hundred clients, AI ops is absolutely necessary in today's day and age. It reduces the mean time to resolution, it lowers the learning curve for new staff, and provides better and stronger data at the root cause. So what are you seeing that translate to for those clients? Is that f less issues? Is that less impact of those issues? Is that more issues be resolved by a small team size? Kind of how's that translating? It, it's a combination. So sometimes we find new problems because we just weren't looking for them. Mm -hmm. We can improve processes. We can eliminate some problems completely. And some problems we just kick down the road until we find a better solution tomorrow. And is, how's that sort of impacting the clients as they look to sort of improve their posture, do more with less? Are we seeing that sort of translate to real sort of KPIs and metrics? Absolutely. You know, from an infrastructure standpoint, the stronger the infrastructure is, the more uptime you have and the stronger your business is. So, Paul, I want to take you back to something you said. Great discussion there, but I think there's something in skills. You talked about it as a sort of side benefit, I think, almost to AI ops. I think it's probably a little bit more fundamental than that. Where do you see skills in the equation? Well, that's actually a very key question. Um, you know, we do a BMC survey every year, which you, you perhaps know about. And one of the questions we ask is about you know, length of experience and mainframe and, and things like that. We've been asking the same question essentially for years, so we you know, have some sort of idea of trending and stuff like that. And you know, one of the key things we're seeing, I mean, in the most recent one in particular, you know, the number of people with 20 plus years is going significantly down, and the people with one to five years of experience is going significantly up. So you've got, you know, by definition, you know, less skilled workforce. So, you know, it, it takes a long time for everyone to learn the skills of those people. So the more you can put into product, build in domain expertise into, into you know, the products and the actual technology, you know, you can kind of speed up that learning skill and, and kind of, you know not make it so required, in fact, because the products are doing more of it. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're taking the intelligence, they're, doing, they're guiding people, you know, they're, they're, they're taking that next step. So are you seeing the same, Paul, from, I mean, obviously in Sono, yes. huge footprint of clients, so that sort of microcosm that might be within one client, you're seeing that spread across two or 300 clients. Yes. Are you seeing that same trend? Absolutely. It's, it's like your custom car, right? You have one mechanic that works on it for years and years, and then that me mechanic retires. So what are you gonna do? There is not that strong skill set, especially for the kind of languages that are used in the mainframe. And with Python coming in, and with AI coming in, it reduces that learning curve. It makes it 
a lot more robust. It allows people to work unsiloed. So from that perspective, we've got a great snapshot right now, lots going on from an AI perspective, fusing that with the operational things that we've talked about. Where do you see that over the next two to three years? I mean, it's going to continue to evolve and it's going to, it's going to get more powerful and it's going to get easier to use. I mean, some of the earlier AI ops based products, you had to have months worth of data before you could do anything useful with it. I mean, now you know, less is required before you can start to see results, all these kinds of things. And like anything, I mean, you know, as pe more people start to adopt it, it it's, it's going to grow and it's going to become way more powerful. And Ab absolutely, and I see, I see the industry coming together and building better industry standards. And how do you see those sort of moving forward and evolving over the maybe the next two or three years? It's 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 just going to take off. It already has. I mean, AI ops in the mainframe has been talked about for a few years. Now people, you know, BMC is producing. Other vendors are producing AI ops. There's actual practices. We're seeing it in the news with you know, about Gmail's Chat GPT um, and other options out there. And people are actually seeing the benefits. So if we start to bring us home here, Paul, if you were to summarize up BMC's perspective to AI ops in maybe two or three sentences, what would those be? Well, I mean, we are huge believers in it. I mean, it's, it is the future. You know, we, we want to be part of it. We are part of it. And you know, we're, you know, we're going to continue to look at ways of leveraging it in, in, in more of our products. Um, you know, we, we have to because the market needs it, I mean, basically. So great perspective from you, Paul. What are you seeing from the client perspective? From a client perspective, we can't stay quiet. We have to reach out. We have to work with the vendors because we're the ones putting it into practical application. They have great experts that know the industry, but as a user, as someone who's applying this day in and day out, we have to be very vocal about what's working and what's not working today. I think that's a great way to summarize up, I think. Thank you very much for that, guys. It's been yeah. great to get your perspective on this really emerging trend and how it's going to impact the industry. You've been listening to the Futurum Tech webcast brought to you in collaboration with BMC. Thanks very much for listening. Please click and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the other side.